Hello and welcome to this biopsychology topic video, this one looking at endogenous pacemakers and exogenous site gavers, how to structure and write an effective essay on this topic. In this video we're going to consider the following question. Outline and evaluate the effect of endogenous pacemakers and exogenous site gavers on the sleep-wake cycle for 16 marks. If I was going to structure this essay I would adopt the following structure, where I'd start by outlining endogenous pacemakers and then I'd draw on research support by Morgan who examined these pacemakers in hamsters. However, what I would do is extend my evaluation by bringing in a counter-criticism linked to the question to do with animal research and I'll talk to you more about that in a moment. I would then go on and outline exogenous site gavers and again I would bring in research support, this time bringing in research by CIFRA, but again I would extend this further with a counter-argument to do with the case study method. If I have time I might write an evaluation paragraph related to the idea of reductionism and either way I'll show you what that might look like by the end of this particular video. So let's start by looking at how we might outline endogenous pacemakers and remember the key to a 16 marker is we have a very limited word count so we're after a short, concise but accurate outline of knowledge. Okay? So you might start with something like this. Biological rhythms are regulated by endogenous pacemakers which is the internal biological clocks and exogenous site gavers the external factors which reset the sleep-wake cycle every day to maintain coordination with the outside world. You might go on to say that endogenous pacemakers are internal mechanisms that govern biological rhythms, in particular the sleep-wake cycle. The suprachiasmatic nuclei, okay, which lies in the hypothalamus, is the main endogenous pacemaker and it controls other biological rhythms and is linked to other areas of the brain, for example the pineal gland, which is responsible for sleep and arousal. The SCN also receives information about light levels from the optic nerve, which sets the circadian rhythm so that it's in synchronisation with the outside world, for example, day and night. Nice outline there, quite detailed, but loads of specialist terminology. I've bolded the key terms on screen just to really show off to the examiner that we've got a real command of these biopsychology terms. Let's look at how we might write an extended evaluation paragraph, what we call a double whopper paragraph, where we're going to draw on research support, but we're also going to at the same time criticise that support. And there's some key points that we'll make as we go through this. So you might say that there is research support for the importance of endogenous pacemakers, in particular the suprachiasmatic nuclei, in relation to the sleep-wake cycle. Notice how immediately I've signposted my answer back to the question with that top bum. Morgan bred hamsters so that they had a circadian rhythm of 20 hours rather than 24. SCN neurons from these abnormal hamsters were transplanted into the brains of normal hamsters who subsequently displayed the same abnormal circadian rhythm of 20 hours showing that the transplanted SCN had imposed this particular biological pattern onto the new hamsters. So we've provided our point, we've brought in our evidence to support that point. Look at what we're going to do now, we're going to counter argue that and say actually this evidence isn't that strong and give a reason for that. So I've gone on to say, however, this research is difficult to generalise because of its use of hamsters. Humans would respond very differently to manipulations of their biological rhythms, not only because we are different biologically, but also because of the vast differences in environmental contexts. And you may or may not extend that further if you wished. When it now comes to the bottom bum, which is what you might call the explanation, the link back to the question, and you need to explain why all this matters. We now need to develop a justified conclusion. So look what I wrote here. I said, while this research demonstrates the importance or the significance of the suprachiasmatic nuclei uh, and how endogenous pacemakers impact biological rhythms, again, for example, the sleep-wake cycle, the research is carried out on animals might not be able to explain the role of endogenous pacemakers and the sleep-wake cycle in humans. Okay, So I've justified my conclusion by saying these results are significant and important, but they may not apply to humans and therefore provide little understanding to our knowledge of the sleep-wake cycle in human participants. Okay. Very, very uh, meaty, excuse the pun, uh, paragraph there, but you can see how we've really crammed in two evaluation paragraphs for the price of one, and that's important. Now let's look at what we would do for the exogenous site gabers bit. Remember, this is the second half of our outline, and I'll show you the whole essay at the end. So here we might say another important uh, influence on biological rhythms is exogenous site gabers, and these can be described as environmental events that are responsible for entraining the biological clock of an organism, in this case humans. These can include social cues, such as mealtime and social activities, but the most important zeitgeber is light, which is responsible for resetting the biological clock each day, keeping it on a 24-hour cycle. That's our outline. Let's again go on to the research support. So remember what I said here, we're going to now bring in CIFRA's research support, but again we're going to criticise the use of a case study method, so let me show you what that looks like. Again, notice highlighted on the screen how I've signposted this knowledge back to the question, or this evaluation back to the question. 
So this time around, I've said there is research support for the role of exogenous site gavers on the sleep-wake cycle. Uh, when uh, Sifra returned from the underground stay with no clocks alight, he believed the date to be a month earlier uh, than it actually was, which demonstrates the importance of exogenous site gavers on the sleep-wake cycle. Okay. However, Sifra's case study, and this is where I'm going to now bring in my criticism, has been the subject of much criticism. As the researcher and sole participant in the case study, there are severe issues when it comes to research advice and the potential lack of generalizability to the wider population. So again, we've stated our point, we've brought in the evidence to support that point, but we've criticised our evidence. And now what we need to do in this bottom bum is justify a conclusion. So what we're saying here is, again, therefore, while this, these results, or this result in this particular case, suggest that the 24-hour sleep-wake cycle was increased by the lack of exogenous site gabers and highlights the impact of the factors on a biological rhythm. These findings need to be treated with caution. We're unable to conclude whether the role of site gabers affects the sleep-wake cycle in a wider population on the basis of this case study method alone. So these two really extended what we call double whopper paragraphs really are providing us with four evaluation points for the price of two. Okay, And that would be enough at this stage, I'd imagine, to uh, achieve a top mark band for response in, in, in relation to this particular question. Okay, The final point, I just want to demonstrate how we might take the idea of reductionism uh, and bring in the concepts of reductionism to evaluate this essay. So you might say, however, despite all of the research support for the role of endogenous pacemakers and exogenous sight gabers, the arguments could be considered reductionist for overly simplifying a complex human phenomenon. So the sleep-wake cycle is clearly a very complex behaviour. For example, it could be argued that the sleep-wake cycle is influenced by other people and social norms. For example, some people would argue that sleep occurs when it's dark because it's a social norm and it's not acceptable for a person to conduct their daily routines during the night, not to mention the fact that actually you go to school during the day, shops are open during the day, and actually it makes conducting life very difficult if you wanted to reverse your rhythm. So therefore, maybe it's a social explanation. Therefore, we could argue that the research discussed, so the studies we've looked at, could be criticised for being reductionist, as they only consider a limited range of factors, for example, endogenous pacemakers or zeitgebers, and fail to consider other divergent viewpoints, suggesting that our understanding and the effect of endogenous pacemakers and zeitgebers is limited. And look how I've really just used the wording of the question at the end there to conclude this essay, okay? There's the entire essay. I've placed the entire essay on screen. And it's worth noting that this essay is slightly longer than what we would expect for a 16 marker. However, what I was trying to do here was demonstrate lots of good technique, including an issues debates paragraph that we might use. And your task is really to take an essay like this and see how you might condense it into a manageable word limit. So the knowledge section is about right, but the evaluation is a touch on the long side. So just be aware of that. I hope you found this video on essay writing useful. Uh, again, thank you once again for watching and goodbye for now.